Never before have so many Americans been censored. Never before. And it continues. As I said, the Supreme Court has punted on some of these challenges to the censorship issues. You know, and of course, all of that was part of the censorship operations of Twitter at the time. Uh, it fit in nicely with the FBI giving a heads up to Facebook and Twitter and such. Oh, well, there's Russia disinformation coming down the pike. You should be on alert on it. And sure enough, this information comes out. This letter gets published and they start deleting and censoring the New York Post story and other information about the Hunter Biden laptop. And Judicial Watch uncovered more documents about this type of censorship, thanks again to another Judicial Watch lawsuit. It shows that state election officials in the days before and after the 2020 election were flagging online content deemed, quote, misinformation and, sender, and sending it to the Center for Internet Security, a DHS government-funded nonprofit, and CISA, the Cybersecurity and Infrastructure Security Agency, which is an agency of the Department of Homeland Security, and the Election Integrity Partnership, which is a front for all the censorship operations. Again, it was a Judicial Watch lawsuit that exposed all of this. It includes the November 4th, 2020 email from the CIS misinformation reports to the government official, Brian Scully, in the Department of Homeland Security. Their mal mis disinformation branch. What the heck is government having like a misinformation branch? It sounds like something out of George Orwell, doesn't it? The report op originated in the Washington Secretary of State's office, the state of Washington. I wanted to flag the following tweet. Boy, why would a tweet be sent to any federal official for flagging? Talk about communism. There is no evidence for the claim being made of a widespread mail-in fraud operation to benefit Democrats in swing states. Oh, really? I think that's a disputable point, isn't it? What's your definition of fraud? Changing the rules at the last minute? Counting ballots that you're not supposed to be counting? Counting ballots away from observers? Counting ballots after their election day? And the response, the tweet reads, a note to all conservative media people projecting Trump victories in swing states. Yes, Republicans turnout may be strong. Yes, that's good news. From a mail-in state veteran, the Democrats will wait to know how many votes they have to find, then they will magically appear. Why would that be an issue for the government to be policing a tweet like that? That's a political point. First Amendment protected speech. On November 12th, Scully sends an email with the subject line, hammer and scorecard tweets to individuals whose names are redacted. So you had the federal government sending around tweets that he didn't like. Hammer and scorecard, I don't remember what that was about. I think that was, those were questions about the computer tracking or, you know, the computer, uh, excuse me, the, uh, the voting machines. On uh, January 19th, 2021, it just never stopped. Scully received an email with the subject line, COVID-19, what to expect in 60-day plan. I want to pass along SIO's Stanford Internet Observatory, Stanford's censorship operation, vaccine misinfo, what to expect, and 60-day plan draft white paper for your feedback. Find it attached. Feel free to tear it apart. It is ba mainly based on our experience with EIP, the Election Integrity Partnership censorship operation, and the vaccine misinfo, misinfo we've seen thus far. 
they were planning to censor vaccination information and issues about it prior that to the widespread distribution of the vaccine. This is the government prepping the battlefield for censorship by working with these outside front groups. On November 2nd, 2020, a person at Facebook's US Politics and Government Outreach, whose name is redacted, replies to misinformation reports at that CIS front group, CCs the government official Scully at SISA, and other officials at SISA, with the subject of the email being Facebook post alleging submitting multiple ballots fraudulently. The Facebook official states, on it now, thanks, regarding review of the social media post. So basically, the government goons or their fronts were telling Facebook to censor something, and Facebook says, we're on it. Just gets worse and worse, doesn't it? Another response from Facebook. Regarding review of a social media reports, reported, uh, a social media post reported by a government official in Kentucky. Received and looking into this. Confirming this is closed out and the Secretary of State has been notified. Of course, we don't know what Facebook censored. The records provide disturbing evidence of a conspiracy by federal, state, and private actors to censor Americans on social media during a presidential campaign. And of course, you know, the plan is in place, as I say, for COVID after the campaign at the beginning of the Biden presidency. Judicial Watch will continue to expose the government's involvement in what is an ongoing and unprecedented attack on Americans' First Amendment rights. So you really need to pursue our material or follow up with our material here. We have a lawsuit that's pending, at least it's on appeal over direct censorship by Judicial Watch from one of these state actors in California a weekly update video featuring, featuring me was taken down at the request of the Secretary of State or her office in California or his office. I don't know which, who was running it at the time. I don't remember. We got a lawsuit over that. And of course, if I'm being victimized, if, you're, if Judicial Watch is being victimized, if Trump is being victimized, if New York Post is being victimized and censored, you're being censored because you want this information. You have a right to it and they're depriving you of information you would otherwise get access to. So you're a victim as well, dear listener, dear viewer, dear follower. Never before have so many Americans been censored, never before. And it continues, as I said, the Supreme Court has punted on some of these challenges to these censorship issues. And so you can be sure the Biden administration will take it as a green light to increase censorship in the run up to the election. And I use the term Biden administration loosely because we don't know who's running the Biden administration now, but he's the nominal president. So we'll keep an eye out on your behalf for your First Amendment rights. Judicial Watch, of course, always with the heavy lifting for the Constitution and the rule of law. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like our video down below.